MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. and loving and gracious and holy one, you who we call good, you who we call holy, are but a mere reflection of the goodness and the holiness that you see in us. So thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. 
thank you for sending us on our way. Thank you for being with us as we gather in this sacred space this day. And so we ask, your loving and embracing and holy one, that you would enable us now to sense your spirit, to feel your spirit, to know the goodness and the holiness that is inherent in each and every human life that you have created, that you have given breath to this morning. And through this worship, through this time of fellowship and friendship, one with the other, enable us to see the magnification of our God in each and every person that surrounds us this day, as well as seeing it in ourselves. May we be blessed, not in a selfish way this day, but always in a selfless way, a way that encourages us to bless others around us, for there is more than enough blessing to go around filling us to overflowing over and over and over again. So greet us this day as we greet you, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's welcome our kids as they come forward this morning. up here, Miss Jane, because they want to join the choir. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're just going to do a brief blessing. I, I have just got to tell you, I had the opportunity to, to, to teach last week because we, have, we do actually have a really large teaching team, and they've either been sick or out on vacation. So, And guess what? They're sick again today. So I get to be blessed again to teach. So this is a complete commercial. I am very, very glad <laughs> that in this last week, I had two people come forward to be assistants, and if there's any of you who'd like to come forward and offer to be teachers as well, see me or call me during the week. But we get to offer our blessing to our children as they go back to truly learn the Word of God and how to live that out. And today they're going to be learning about compassion, was something that Reverend Neal preached so brilliantly on uh, last month. And so I'm going to ask that we join together and reach out to them as we pray blessings upon them. Precious, precious God, you said, come to me as a little child. Well, here we have our children today. And so we, the grown-ups, are going to just offer a blessing to you, but indeed, we are blessed by what you teach us as well. So may your time together in a few moments while worship happens in here, that you indeed will worship as well. And may you know fully and completely that all your moms and dads, aunties and uncles, love you and are with you. And I ask this in Jesus' beloved and precious name. Amen. 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 Well, as our kids go back to Kids Club or not, whichever is their choice this morning, <laughs> we want to get to welcome one another. It's a real joy to welcome you to worship this morning, uh, a real joy to welcome you as we begin this week of anniversary week. Uh, in just a few days' time, we'll be celebrating 45 years as a church, uh, 45 years as a movement around the world, and 45 years of creating a difference uh, both in the, our church, but also in churches around the globe. And we are so grateful for that opportunity. Uh, today, of course, it is Sunday. It's a great day to be in the, in, the name of, uh, in the house of our God, and we want to welcome each and every one of you. I want to welcome you, especially if you're worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. We know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, uh, but we are delighted that you've chosen to be present with us today. I wonder if you'd indulge my spirit. If indeed you're with us for the very first time today, I wonder if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can see you, uh, so that we can welcome you to worship this morning. Please do accept this flower and a welcome pack as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us. You really are our guest today, um, and we want you to feel and to know that you are extremely welcome. If there is anything that we can do to make your visit more meaningful, please do let us know. Please let one of the ushers speak if you need to uh, find anything in our church building. But you are our guest, and we sincerely want you to be welcomed uh, in this place this morning. 
We also want to welcome all those who are worshiping online with us this morning. We know that uh, we have folks who worship with us around the globe, and we are delighted to welcome you this morning. Uh, our orders of worship are online, so please do take a moment just to uh, download that so that you can follow along in service with us. Uh, but know that wherever you are in your world, you are a part of our extended family, and we're delighted to welcome you to worship this morning. In just a few moments, the ushers will be passing out the welcome tablet, so please do take a moment to sign in for us today. Uh, let us know that you've been present in worship. It's also important for us to know how we may be able to minister effectively one with the other, so if you're in need of a member of the church staff to give you a call this week, uh, please do check the box where you ask for a member of the staff to call you, and we'll do our very best to follow up with you in the next a day or so. Of course, if you're in need of emergency pastoral care today, if you need someone to speak to today, we want you to know that you do not need to leave this place without knowing that you are loved and cared for. So please do avail yourself of any of us that served on the dais this morning, directly after worship, and we'll be glad to spend a few moments with you. And then, of course, if need be, uh, make a follow-up appointment with you so that we can do more in-depth time with you. But know that we want to care and to be your pastors and to be staff in this congregation. In just a few weeks, uh, this part of our worship service will be disappearing. Uh, we made a covenant with each other that uh, we were going to take the announcements uh, of the church out of the main worship service with the agreement that you would take your orders of worship home and mark on your own calendars the events and ministries that you want to become a part of. So uh, the five or ten minutes that we take during announcements will be given over to more worship time. Uh, so please remember that. Uh, also, the announcements will be embedded into the uh, church newsletter. Uh, they'll also be available on a scrolling screen before worship, um, and they'll be available on Facebook and many of the other mediums that we have in our church. So there really is no excuse not to be up to date as much as possible uh, with all of the activities of our congregation. However, we do have some announcements for you this morning, uh, so please uh, just bear with me. First of all, I want to say thanks to the Young Professionals Group who last night took uh, an exhibition to Glow over in Santa Monica Boulevard, uh, Santa Monica Beach. Uh, I, I checked online with that event, and it was going on until 3 o'clock in the morning, so I'm surprised that the young professionals are here this morning, but, uh, uh, but we are glad that uh, your ministry continues. If you want more information about our young professionals group, please see Phoebe. She's raising her hand right now, and she'll be delighted to tell you more about our group. As I said, next Sunday or next weekend, we'll be celebrating 45 years as a congregation. Yeah, I think that deserves a round of applause. We had a great uh, kickoff event this week uh, with the showing of Call Me Troy. Uh, we had a good group of people who came up and listened to Troy. Troy was here for us and did questions and answers afterwards. And uh, it was just a treat to have him in the house. Uh, and he is just very excited about this weekend. Uh, so first of all, just to remind you, next Saturday we have the first of the anniversary events. It's the Cloud of Witnesses. It's our 45th anniversary. Uh, um, a founders History Celebration in Music, the Spoken Word, and so much more. It's a free event. Uh, the archives committee and the music team have been doing an extremely great job in pulling together a wonderful concert for us next Saturday evening. So we really want to invite you to come out. It's at 7 o'clock. Uh, Lucia says that she needs some volunteers for next Saturday. So if you are able to help, uh, please see Lucia. Lucia's uh, the one clapping. She's now raising her hand and waving it at us. Uh, you can't miss her. She's raising her hair. Uh, all sorts of things just to draw your attention. Um, and uh, on her little note here, she said they're non speaking parts. You must be able to walk and chew gum at the same time, uh, but um, uh, you need to be coordinated. See, see Lucia uh, directly after worship and she'll give you more, more information about that opportunity. And then our, our, our anniversary team have just been doing a spectacular job. Uh, Dawn and Don. You see, there is a difference between those two names. Uh, they have been doing a great job. Uh, in organizing our events for next Sunday. Uh, and before we get to them, I just want to let you know what's happening next Sunday morning. So next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, uh, Reverend Elder Dr. Troy D. Perry, the founder and first senior pastor of this congregation, uh, will be preaching for us. That will be at our 9 o'clock service. At the 11 o'clock service, the Reverend Elder Dr. Nancy Wilson, the current moderator and the former and longest serving senior pastor of our congregation, will be preaching for us. Uh, in between services, there'll be some archive uh, information and exhibits uh, all the way throughout the building detailing the last 45 years and our buildings and what we did and where we've come from. Uh, they've been just doing a great job. And so next Sunday, now people have been saying to me, well, what about the 1.30 service? 
Well, some of you will know that the 130 service, which is our Spanish service, um, also have an anniversary, and that will be at Pentecost next year. And we've invited uh, Bishop and uh, Reverend Elder uh, Hector Gutierrez to preach at the 130 service for their anniversary next year. So they're not missing out. They're still part of our anniversary. Uh, but we thought it was more appropriate to have a Spanish-speaking pastor and bishop of our denomination, or elder of our denomination, come and preach for them next year. So uh, we are just delighted that uh, Reverend Hector has already agreed to be here, and he'll be here next May, so you'll get to hear another elder next year. Uh, but we're just delighted with so many of the anniversary events. I'm going to ask Don if he would come briefly and just speak to us about the anniversary events for the afternoon and for the evening. Good morning. I hope you're all planning to join us next Sunday. Yes. It is going to be an amazing evening, amazing afternoon and evening. Um, if you haven't purchased tickets yet, in the afternoon, we're going to have our private reception with Bishop Gene Robinson, Reverend Troy, and Reverend Nancy. If you don't know who Bishop Gene Robinson is, he's the first openly gay Episcopal bishop in the entire world. It was basically Gene and Troy who transformed Christianity around the world and opened up the dialogue in mainstream churches outside of MCC, who, of course, was the forerunner that opened up freedom for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, but if you would like private time with them next Sunday, we're going to have an amazing reception uh, in Beverly Hills. And then following that, we're going to have our dinner gala at the Peterson Automotive Museum, which will be just incredible. We have great music set up for you. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Troy, Nancy, Bishop Jean, and of course, our own Neil. Um, we've got great <laughs> surprises for you. <laughs> and we have amazing food. Maggiano's is going to be catering our dinner that night. It's going to be incredible. Um, if you haven't purchased tickets, Don and I will be right outside on the sidewalk right afterwards. Today is the last day to purchase tickets because we have to give Maggiano's our count by tomorrow. So come see us today. Get your tickets. If um, you have signed up for scholarships and you need some help, we want our whole church family to be able to be there. So please come see us. If you signed up for one of those scholarships, come see us this morning at the table so we can work it out so you can be there with us also. And lastly, if you bought a VIP ticket and are going to be there for the reception, please check in with us today. Make sure we have your correct email address because I'm going to be emailing you directions, address, and all that to the reception in Beverly Hills. It's up in the hills, so it's kind of confusing. So we're going to actually send you maps and the whole bit. So check in with us. Make sure we have your email address. If we have anybody attending Sunday night, who could help out one of our members with a ride home afterwards to downtown LA area, please come let us know. We have one member who just needs a ride home afterwards. So if that's something you could help us with and help one of our church members get home after the deal, please come let Don or I know so we can uh, arrange that for it. Thank you very much, and I hope we see everybody next Sunday. And for those of you who are attending the uh, vibrant, inclusive, progressive reception in the afternoon, uh, for those of you who are worried about parking, there is valet parking, uh, so don't worry about parking. That's all been taken care of. Uh, and of course, there's a huge parking lot at the uh, Peterson Automotive Museum as well. So uh, we're looking forward to a great weekend next weekend. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Amen. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, just a couple of other quick announcements for you. Uh, first of all, membership and inquirers class. If you are new to our congregation and would like more information about what it means to be a member of our congregation, uh, please meet with uh, Bonnie Dosty. That will be on uh, Tuesday, October the 8th, between the hours of 7 and 9. Uh, that's in the Rosa Parks room. Uh, you can contact Reverend uh, Dr. Pat Langlois for more information. Uh, AIDS Walk Los Angeles is on October the 13th, and we are signing up for our walk and for our team. Uh, you can see those in the courtyard directly after worship. Sammy is here, and we're delighted he's here, and so is Laura Law. Uh, so please see them afterwards uh, today. Our congregational meeting is coming up. Uh, October is an extremely busy month for us as a church, and uh, our congregational meeting is coming up. If you're interested in being, becoming a board member or a member of the lay delegates of our church, applications are due by October the 16th. Uh, you can visit the board's table um, or you can go online uh, to our website at mccla.org and you can download an application uh, right from the website. So please uh, think about that and see if God is calling you to that ministry. We have our forum on October the 19th. That's between the hours of 10 and noon. Um, that will also be broadcast live on our website, so you can uh, check in with us there, and you can also uh, send questions if you have any uh, via text, uh, and we'll be answering those questions on October the 19th. And then on uh, October the 27th, which is our congregational meeting, 
That's the day where we have all church meeting. So we'll be no 9 o'clock, no 11 o'clock, no 1.30 service. We have an all church worship service. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then we uh, have worship, uh, We have the congregational meeting at 12.30. All that information is in your bulletin, so please do avail yourself of that. And finally, uh, uh, HIV AIDS town hall meetings. Um, our next one is on uh, Thursday, October the 10th at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's sponsored by us and Congregation Colony. And Dr. Ron Diskin uh, of the Weizmann Institute of Science will be speaking for us. As many of you know, there's been some huge advances uh, in the care of HIV and AIDS over the last decade. Um, and new news coming out uh, recently about some of the new medications and the possibility of a vaccine. Uh, for those affected by HIV and those already infected by HIV. So we want you to have as much information as you possibly can do. Uh, so there is a town hall meeting uh, with Dr. Ron, and that will be on Thursday, October the 10th. Again, you can speak to Sammy Hancock, who leads our POS Spirit Group, um, and he'll have more information about that for you as well. God is good. All the time. And all the time. So let's share that goodness now lavishly with one another as we share peace. God bless you. You're in the right place. Many of you will know about uh, the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund. And I'm just going oh, to, there we go. The Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund is a fund that was established in our congregation uh, following the death uh, by suicide of Christine Daniels, who was a member of our congregation. She was the sports writer for the LA Times for many, many years and transitioned. Um, and during that transition, uh, found a home for us, a home for herself here at Founders MCC. And uh, later on, uh, during that period of her own life and of her own transition and some of the turmoil that many transgender folk go through in their own lives, um, experienced oppression and prejudice, and finally could no longer live with the depression that was inside her own body, and finally took her own life. And we memorialized her in this congregation through the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund. We believe that her legacy should live on, especially for those who are doing education especially for those who are improving themselves and especially in our transgender community, although not specifically. And so every year we give out some scholarships to folks who are in full-time education, uh, to those who are uh, looking for a little bit of help with buying books or with some tutoring, uh, or for those folks who are just trying to self-improve. And so this morning we are delighted to be able to give out four scholarships in the name of the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund, each for $500 each. We're going to ask the following to come forward very briefly so that we can give these scholarship checks out to Bambi Salcedo, to Diane Vanderbilt, to Christopher Gray, and to Abigail Martin. If you would come forward. about you, but it makes me feel so good that this congregation is not just a congregation that receives money in, but it's a congregation that is willing to give it away and to certainly support members of our own community who are doing great things and become the new activists in our world. So thank you, and if you would like to help with the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund, please see Amy at any time throughout the year, and we make sure that all that money gets distributed appropriately. Thank you.
Our scripture reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. And as you hear this, you'll recognize it's from the message. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This isn't a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your child asks for bread, do you trick them with sawdust? If they ask for fish, do you scare them with a live snake on their plate? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children. So don't you think the God who conceived you in love will be even better? Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. So before I get into the word this morning, I uh, couldn't help but notice uh, Audrey Liggins is with us this morning. She's up in the balcony. Uh, she's from, uh, she's a, a former member of our church. She's now in Las Vegas. And uh, of course, this weekend, the Las Vegas church was celebrating their uh, Spanish-speaking ministry as well. And so uh, Reverend Alejandro and the Spanish choir, Acoro, uh, were in Las Vegas last night celebrating with them. So we want to give them a round of applause and appreciation. They are feverishly driving back from Las Vegas to make sure that they're back here for the 1.30 service, and uh, I hope they tithe their winnings, that's all I can say. Um, and uh, many of you last weekend would have noticed uh, that I was wearing a clerical collar and a stole, and several people said, was there a special occasion last weekend? Well, the special occasion last weekend was that I couldn't find a short sleeve shirt uh, that would go over my cast. Uh, and so I felt underdressed without a stole on and with short sleeves, and so I just wore that because I could. Um, and uh, uh, this weekend has been a, a whole fiasco of trying to get my fashion sense right. Um, you know, I, I genuinely believe that I should dress appropriately for worship. That's just my thing. I don't expect other people to do that. You know, it's just my thing. Uh, and so yesterday, uh, Jenny and I from uh, my former congregation in Bournemouth spent almost the whole day uh, trying to find a dress shirt that was short sleeve so that I could wear a tie because uh, I like to wear a tie at the 11 o'clock service. And, uh, you know, of course, now, of course, the, it's the fall season. So all the stores have sent back their short sleeve dress shirts and all they have is long sleeve dress shirts. Uh, and so I spent like couple of hours kind of just trying to figure out what I should do, what I should do. Should I just get one of my old shirts and, and cut them so that they're, you know, so it's short-sleeved? Uh, the, the guy who put this full cast on me assured me I'd be able to wear a jacket, that it would be okay. And this morning I got up and tried to put my jacket on. Of course, it didn't go over my hard cast that I'm now wearing. And, you know, uh, and so I... So I have no button to do up, and I feel just a little bit underdressed, so please indulge me and uh, accept my apologies as I feel a little underdressed this morning. Okay, now that's out. I can get that out. So uh, let's join with me in prayer and pray for this preacher boy this morning. God, he's a mess. God, we just thank you. We thank you for your grace and for your wisdom and for your mercy. We thank you that your love abides in us no matter what we look like. <laughs> we thank you, God, that you never fail us and that you never fail to surprise us, that you show up in all kinds of different places. And this morning, we're thankful that you decided to show up with us this morning, that you showed up in each and every one of us as we brought our authentic selves to this place, each and every one of us. Thank you that we can lay ourselves open before you. Thank you that you love us deeply. And so it is in that knowledge of that great love for us, that we're able to make ourselves available to you. So we ask now as we open our hearts and our minds before you that you would do what you do best and love us deeply. Speak to us in that still small voice even as we preach so that we may hear the interpretation of that word that speaks so profoundly to each and every one of us in our own circumstances uniquely and as a church. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be found acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the living Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. So this week, we bring to an end this series of sermons that we've been preaching throughout the, uh, the, throughout the September month uh, under recovery, as we've celebrated recovery within our own congregation. Recovery is a month that's celebrated uh, around the world for those of us who are in recovery, those of us who are in 12-step groups or 12-step rooms around the world. It's a time for us to stop and to pause and to give thanks for that moment of decision in which we would hand our control, hand our power over to a God who is greater than us, to a power that is greater than us. And throughout these last few weeks, we've been preaching the 12 steps of Christianity. There's not been 12 steps, but we acknowledge that there are 12 steps, uh, that each and every one of us uh, is in recovery from something, that not one of us is left out of this occasion. And our, our addiction or our recovery may not be from drugs or from alcohol or from substance abuse or from any of those things, although for some of us it may be. Uh, but the reality is that we're all in recovery from something. We're in recovery perhaps from a bad relationship, 
Uh, we're in recovery from a broken heart. We're in recovery from toxic religion. Uh, we're in uh, recovery from a religion that told us that God didn't love us and recovering, knowing that God loves us just the way that we are. And that each of us is in recovery from something. And so when we celebrate recovery in our congregation, even though we, of course, celebrate the recovery of those who are in 12-step groups and uh, working the rooms, we're also in alignment with each other to know that all of us are in the same boat together, that all of us have something that we are dealing with in our own lives. And we are grateful for us as 12-step Christians. We're so grateful that we have a God who knows us, loves us, and wants the very best for us. Yes. I think that's what Scripture was telling us this morning. The Scripture was saying, you know, why would you give your child something that isn't good for them, and yet the God who we believe in is the God who lavishes that great love upon us. Mm. It is that God who wants to lavish recovery in our lives. It is that God who truly wants to welcome us in the full and authentic human beings that we are. And whilst many of us may have been damaged from things in the past, we believe in a God who heals us and brings us to wholeness in our lives. And that part of our journey, part of our quest, part of our life's mission, if you will, as those who are followers of Jesus or those who are, so, who are uh, re in recovery or those of us who know a higher power, we know that this God is a God who wants only the very best for us. It's not a God who wants to deal with us a bad deal. It's a God who wants us, each and every one of us, to reach our fullest potential. And so over the last few weeks, we've been looking at some of those steps that we might be taking in our own 12-step Christianity. Uh, we looked at the reality that for those of us who are followers of Jesus, or those of us who are perhaps even just thinking about what it might mean to believe in God, that we stand on a first foundation, a place that we stand on is right at the very beginning, knowing that we have a God that we can trust. And, and even if it's just trust this much, it, or, or perhaps even less than that, that no matter where we are on that journey, we get the opportunity in this church just to dare to trust, perhaps just to dare to trust again. To know that there is a God and to believe in that God. Maybe not the God that we learned from, from our ancestors. Maybe not the God that we believed in, uh, in a former place or a former time in our lives. But that we get to risk, we get to chance it just one more time in believing in a God who is truly in us. A God who is truly around us. Uh, and then we moved on to discover and to realize that uh, we know and acknowledge that we are powerless we're certainly powerless over people, places, and things. That's what they say in the 12-step rooms, that they're powerless over people, places, and things. But we realize that the one thing that we are not powerless over is ourselves. We're not powerless over our choices. We're not powerless over our decisions. We're not powerless over our yes and our no. Scripture tells us, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And that whilst we may not always fulfill that in our lives, we know that we are powerful over ourselves. We're powerful. As we believe in this God who is powerful, if that God is truly in us, then we are also very powerful ourselves. So we agreed with one another that we are not powerless over ourselves. We're not powerless over how we say things to one another. We're not powerless over the generosity with which we share one with the other. We're not powerless over what we say and what we do. And that we have to acknowledge that there is, comes with that power over ourselves certain responsibilities. And certain responsibilities to be as authentic as we possibly can. And so we challenge one another to take that next step in our own awareness of God within us. That we have power to choose how we live our lives. And that's a great power that we get given. Not that we'll always be perfect, but that we have power over ourselves. Then Reverend Millicent preached for us about quality control and she challenged us to think about all of the ways in perhaps we may have harmed ourselves or harmed one another in our journey thus far. In the 12 steps, it's that inventory, if you will, uh, step four of writing all of the defects of our lives. And it uh, depends where you are on that journey and how, how old we might be, but sometimes that list can be quite extensive. Um, and certainly for us in our own Christian journey or in our own human journey, some of our defects can be certainly quite exhausting as we write down those things and the ways that perhaps we've damaged ourselves, yet alone the way we may have damaged one another. And she talked about how we should have that quality control in our lives and what a unique opportunity it is for those in 12-step rooms to be able to write that list, sometimes taking a long time to write, but to really seriously look at that inventory of our own lives 
and to think about how we can then, as we moved on, to make amends in our lives. And sometimes it's not easy to make amends. Sometimes you can't go back and make amends with people because they're no longer a part of your life. Sometimes the reason why we need to make amends is because we've shut them out of our lives. But the reality is that where we can make amends, so we should. And I challenged people within our own congregation last week to uh, think about how we might be able to make amends with people that perhaps we don't talk to in church anymore. Acknowledging that churches are just like every other institution, that we all have our fallouts with one another every now and again. And sometimes it's really important. You know, the, uh, in the Old Testament, it was called Jubilee. It was that time when everything was forgiven and everything was put back to, 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 to normal. Everything was put back to right. Normal is a difficult word to use in our congregation, but everything was put back to that baseline, if you will. I was trying to think of another word. But putting it back to that baseline about how every seven years, every sin would be wiped away and we get to start all over again. Not, not to sin all over again, but get to start all over again. And for many of us, we're called to make amends with each other. Uh, and I'm a little curious this morning because both the sides are really full and the center's a little bit unfull this morning. So I'm just wondering whether how much of amends was going on last week. But uh, I keep being reminded that uh, the air conditioning is actually a little colder on this side of the church. Uh, so people are moving now to the side. So I know we've got to work out this air conditioning thing. But, uh, uh, but it's kind of you're just making those amends one with each other. And today, we take that final step, if you will, to deepen our relationship and to deepen our contact, our commitment to growing as human beings and to growing in our relationship with God. You see, if we, we truly make all of these steps, we are growing all the way along. But the reality is that as we go through these 12 steps, as we go through this Christian understanding of what it means to be in relationship with God, we have this understanding that we are in relationship with God. And that in any relationship that we might be in, whether it's a personal relationship or a relationship with a higher power or a relationship with God of our understanding, whatever language we might want to use, that it takes part of who we are to deepen our commitment and our understanding of the one that we're in relationship with. Mm -hmm. Improving contact with the God of our understanding. Improving contact with God who is with us. And that's not just something that we can do on a Sunday. Now, I truly believe that in order for us to improve that contact that we have with our God, we should take advantage of all of the circumstances of our lives. That we should take advantage of every single opportunity and experience to deepen that awareness of who we are. In the scripture reading, if you, uh, we took it from the message, but in the New International Version it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. And so we were reminded that this God that we believe in is, is not forcing God's self upon us. It's not a relationship that we're forced into. It's a relationship that we get to ask and to seek and to knock. It's a relationship that we get to be involved in. That's why we say in our church so often that we are co-creators with this God. This is not a God who's moving us around like pawns on a chessboard. This is a God who intimately invites us into a relationship and to improve that contact through every circumstance of our lives. That's why I truly believe that we can find joy in our hearts regardless of our circumstances. Because that God is deeply involved in the relationship. We are involved with that God as we ask and as we seek and as we knock and as we move forward in that personal relationship that we're invited into. Improving contact. For some of us, that's improving contact by, by, by regular Sunday attendance at worship. Now, I know I've said this before, and you know, some of you think that I say this selfishly, but you know, as a pastor, I truly am invested in your regular participation at worship. And that's not because if you weren't here, I'd look a bit silly up here preaching on a Sunday morning, although that might be part of the reason. But you know, it, the reason that I really encourage your participation is because sometimes the world can distract us from what it means to be in relationship with God. Mm. And that just coming back to this place on a Sunday, or the midweek for worship, or to the new faith, queer faith forum, or to be involved in a ministry in this church, to do something as a regular spiritual discipline, really encourages us to improve that contact that we have with God. 
Any one of us who might have taken up a hobby or done something or decided that we're going to make a change in our lives. You know as well as I do that until you've done that thing regularly for about six months, Mm. it never really becomes ingrained in who we are and we don't change anything about ourselves. I I certainly know that about CrossFit. (laughs) And I'll get back to it as soon as I possibly can. (laughs) But you know, in order to change our lives, we have to do something regularly on a consistent basis over and over again to make it a habit in our lives, in order for it to become permanent in our lives. I think that each and every one of us should find a spiritual practice, a spiritual discipline where we get to do something regularly, one week after the other, one day after the other, to improve that contact and to improve our own spiritual relationship, to improve our contact with God. Now, I have a couple of spiritual practices that I like to do, um, and but people ask me all the time, well, you know, Pastor, you're always you know, giving and giving and giving, and believe me, I get just as much back in return, but the perception is that I'm always giving and giving and giving. How do you improve your contact with God? And I have a couple of spiritual practices that I do on a very everyday basis. Well, not every day. One, at least one I do every day. Um, my first spiritual practice is Facebook. Now, I know many of you might think that that's a funny spiritual practice. <laughs> but any of you who are Facebook addicts know it's not. A, it's, a very, it's a heavy commitment to a spiritual practice. But, you know, every, every, every morning I get up and after I've done what I need to do first, I then go to Facebook. I have, I think, 4,200 friends on Facebook. Um, and so every morning, the first thing that I do is a spiritual practice is I wish my friends who have birthdays on that day a happy birthday and to ask God to make it a blessed and wonderful day. And every day I do that as a spiritual practice and as I type those words, (laughs) which gets a little bit more problematic right now, but as I type those words, I'm praying for that individual to ask God to bless them on (laughs) this, their birthday. And so I know that at least once throughout the whole year, I've prayed for at least 4,200 people. And that list keeps adding, as you can imagine. But it's a spiritual practice. It's something that I make. And that reminds me to go into my day acknowledging that it's not just about me, but that I'm connected to a much, much bigger group of people and allowing that God to bless them through that action that I make. Now, the second spiritual practice that I have is that every Monday night I sing with the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles. And I want to tell you, in some ways, uh, that really is uh, my church. Uh, that's the place where I go to get fed. I love music. Music spiritually feeds me. Mm-hmm. And it's the place where I go and I have no leadership responsibilities at the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles. It's where I just go and I just happen to be me. Now, they've, they also know who I am, and so I still get called Reverend Neil all the time. Uh, and sometimes that's a, you know, it's like, no, just call me Neil. Just, you know, just, just, like, just call me Troy. You know, just call me Neil. You know, I don't, I don't need the titles, but, you know, this, it's, it's, it's just my place. It's where I go. And uh, I was very proud to be part of them this week. And many of you may know they sung the national anthem at the Dodger Stadium on Friday evening. Um, and that was just a, a great, a great joy. Now... It's only the second time I've been to the Dodger Stadium and nearly 120 of us were all saying, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> Spiritual practice. I know, Dawn. It's a male thing. Yeah. So... <laughs> yes. It's a spiritual practice, improving contact. In 12-step rooms, almost at the end of every 12-step meeting, they say, keep coming back. It works if you work it. Amen? You know, friends, keep coming back. It works if you work it. You you can't just have a theory about it. You, You just can't read it on the page. It's not a novel. This is an experience that we're invited into. And you and I need to keep coming back, keep coming back to church, keep coming back to groups, keep coming back, coming back time after time. Even when you feel like you don't know whether you belong, keep coming back because it works if you work it. This is an experience that we're invited into, to a relationship with God, 
to a relationship with the divine, a relationship with the God who is in us. And in order for us to improve that contact, to develop that contact, to know that contact, to, to be sober, to be Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, we need to keep coming back to the source. And coming back to this place is one of those great ways in which we get to do that as community. So I'm going to invite you as we think about what it truly means to, to improve that contact with God, to think about for your own life. What is it that you need to do as a spiritual practice? What is it that you need to do to, to look at your calendar and just to set aside a, a 90-minute slot on a Sunday morning and to be in church with people who share a common faith and a common journey? It's one of the reasons why 12-step groups are so successful is that there is a common purpose and a common place where they're able to come back and to touch that touchstone of life. To think about how we can make that 90 minutes so meaningful for one another. To keep coming back for it works if you work it. Those of us who have been around church or perhaps have left churches for a long time, you know as easy it is to be a part of a church on a consistent basis as soon as you miss one week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. Suddenly it becomes less of a habit to actually get to church. So it becomes less of a habit to find that connection with God. And so we need to make our own disciplines about coming back to the source, about coming back to the place, about coming back. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. So this morning... Wherever we are in our spiritual journeys, whether we perhaps think that we are well over our 12th step and we don't know where else to go, or we think we're just on that baby steps of developing a habit about coming to church or coming back to that source, I want to encourage you to improve that contact, perhaps through a ministry, perhaps through a program of the church, perhaps through regular attendance, perhaps being involved perhaps doing something. I think of our leaders in our church and just how much they do to keep that improving contact. I don't believe our leaders do it just because they think it's fun. I think it's because they get back as much as they give out. I come every Sunday, not just because I'm the pastor, but because I get back from you just as much as I give out. It's part of who I have become and you have shaped me and I hope at some level I've shaped you. But improving that contact takes discipline. And it takes that opportunity to look at our calendars and say, yep, this is a commitment. This is something I need to do for my wellness and for my wholeness and for my opportunity to be in connection with the God of our understanding. So I want to encourage you as we close this sermon series out to keep working the steps, step by step by step by step, And know that not one of us is perfect. Not one of us has got it all sewn up. Not one of us has has shown the example except Jesus. And so we come back always to look at the mirror and to see how we align in our Christ-likeness with the Jesus who welcomes us this morning. So may God bless us as we prepare for anniversary next Sunday. And we prepare for anniversary just by taking a pause it's just we just hit that pause moment to celebrate 45 years and then we open year 46 Mm. and boy has God got good things in store for us in 46 years of ministry God bless you this morning we're so glad God is with us so thank you God thank you for sharing this moment with us Thank you for reminding us that you want contact with us, that you want us to keep coming back because it works if you work it. And you remind us this morning that for each and every one of us, we make this a discipline. We make this a part of our priorities. And we make it a priority because we know it is good for us. Now bless these words that have come from my mouth today. They're not returned to you without blessing each and every one of us. And add to this whatever you need to, O God, for us as individuals so that we may have a full understanding that today you invite us to ask and seek and knock and that as a good God, you only want the very best for us. And so it is. And so it is.
Please be seated. One of the reasons why we take an offering on a Sunday morning is not just to remind ourselves that church takes commitment financially as well as spiritually, but also to remind us of the work that we do as a church. We're a congregation that believes in giving back just as much as we receive in, and this morning we've demonstrated that in so many different ways already. We demonstrated that through the Christine Daniels Scholarship Fund. We've demonstrated that by providing 300 brown bag sack lunches this morning for homeless folk who are living on the streets in downtown Los Angeles. And this morning, uh, we give thanks for one of our online viewers. A few weeks ago, you may remember that uh, Matt from Australia greeted us uh, via the internet from his hometown. And Matt was uh, one of our new members, one of our new congregants, uh, who lives in the outback. Yes. And it was a joy to welcome him into worship on the cameras. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, after my accident, I got an email from some of the kids from his uh, village uh, who sent me a card virtually online um, saying that we're praying for your hand and for its repair. And it was a beautiful card and it was such a joy. Uh, Matt shared with us how he has been introducing our Jesus time to his kids at that school. Um, He lives in a village of 100 people and there's no church and this has become his church. And so you'll be surprised when I received an email last week uh, saying that Matt was flying all the way from Australia uh, to celebrate our 45th anniversary here in Los Angeles. I would like to this morning introduce to you Matt, who's here all the way from Australia. know that it uh, costs about a thousand dollars a month to do our ministry online to be able to reach as many people as we can do and your gifts and your offerings have made a difference in Matt's life that's why he's here this morning because of your giving and because of what you did there. who knew that what we do here in Los Angeles on a Sunday morning would reach the outback in Australia, to reach Canada, Great Britain, India, Pakistan. Somebody said to me the other morning, did you know that people listen to you in Turkey? Did you ever know that you'd be preaching in Turkey from Los Angeles? I knew all things were possible because of your generosity. So for those of you in this congregation and those of you who are online, We invite you to give generously and know that in this congregation we have a commitment to ensuring that everything that's given, whether it's a tithe, whether it's an offering, or whether it's just given with a generous heart this morning, that every single dime and dollar and cent goes to make a difference in the world. And of course, to ensure that we have a place to worship at called Founders MCC. There is a second offering this morning, and it will be in a basket at the front, and that will be for our Helping Hands Ministry. Our Helping Hands Ministry helps to fund HopeNet, which is our food pantry on a Saturday morning, our Brown Bag Sunday Lunch Program that provides for 300 brown sack lunches on one, one Sunday a month out of this congregation, and also to the Paul Gromberg Scholarship Fund, Benevolence Fund, which many people in this congregation who are members and friends have already received generously to help them make ends meet when they find themselves a little short. We're not always to be able to do everything that's asked for, but we try. So as you give this morning, give generously and with an open heart, knowing that that's part of our spiritual discipline and part of our spiritual connection. Thank you.
because we're in this together. Reach out as we bless this offering this morning. God, we thank you that we are holy hands this day, blessing and sanctifying this offering given in response to your call. And so as we give freely and generously this day, we pray, God, that you will bless both this offering and this love gift to the ministries, specifically for those less fortunate than ourselves. And ensure, O oh God, that through this blessing it is doubled and tripled and even quadrupled so that it will always meet the needs, not just of the church of today, but for the church that we dream of tomorrow, Thank you. doing so much more than we already do. Blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was listening to the sermon like I'm supposed to. And uh, I was thinking about communion and, and, and what it would mean if confession and forgiveness work if we work them. The table works if we work it. And I was thinking about one of my spiritual practices, which is when my brain gets full of all kinds of tasks and troubles and whatever, I, I kind of take a moment to start praising God. And I start declaring who God is to me and what, and what I've experienced with God. And then all of a sudden, I can't really remember those things that were troubling me so much that kind of just cycle and spiral and get me crazy over here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. God is so huge. God is so amazing that together we can handle whatever's going on. So today, as we pray, you can join me now. I'm just going to call out praises to who God is as we bring ourselves to this place. Creator, Redeemer, Friend, Lover, Deliverer, Companion, Hope. God, you're our vision. You are inspiration. You are everything when we have nothing. You're our provider, our healer. You carry us. You push us. You pull us. You pick us up. You bring us back down. You're the one who loves us. You are everything to all people at all times. And we just want to say thank you for at some point being inspired that you would put all that you are into human form. That you would make yourself tangible to us. That we could not only try to hear your voice, in theory, but, but we get to hear your words in scripture that you spoke while you were here to give us courage, to give us strength. You're just so amazing. You are justice. You fight for us, you defend us. You make a way for us when there is no way. You're the one who gives us joy when we can't find it on our own. We just can't believe how good you are to us. So help us remember when we can't even remember. Be our memory, be our imagination, Be the still, quiet voice. Be our cheerleader as we try new things. We take a step of faith. We want to enhance our contact with you. We want to be with you. 
and you're already right here in our midst. All we have to do is quiet ourselves and focus ourselves and call upon you. And then we get to sense you and feel you and be made whole by your presence. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So um, during this week of, uh, or during this month of recovery, I was reading this week the, uh, the road to uh, Emmaus. And yes, Melissa, I listen to the sermons all the time, and sometimes I even read the scriptures. Um, don't get crazy. <laughs> so I don't know if you're familiar with the story, but it was just very refreshing to me. This uh, was the Sunday that Jesus was crucified. And... You know, he went through the betrayal. He had his last supper. Uh, he went through the death, the burial, and he just was resurrected. And Mary had gone to the grave, and we know the angels were there. And he wasn't there. So, you know, Mary went back, and was telling everyone that he wasn't there. They took him. So these two gentlemen, uh, two of the followers, were going to the city of Emmaus. And it was about 20 miles outside of Jerusalem. Well, I don't know about you, but I can barely walk one mile, let alone 20 miles. And they were talking about the events of the weekend, talking about what Jesus was, was going on. And all of a sudden, this, this person who they didn't recognize came up to them and started chatting with them about the, the, the weekend events. They didn't recognize him. It was Jesus. And they continued the rest of the 20 miles. Well, there's several different things I you know, was gleaming through this story. And one of them was is that you know, whenever two or more of us are present, Jesus is amongst our midst. And they continued and walked and discussed, and they didn't know for 20 miles who this presence was. Now, I guess in my recovery, my days of younger youth, if I walked 20 miles with someone, they really would have had to been cute. Um, so, um, obviously I've changed a little bit, but... Um, they finally got to the city of Emmaus, and Jesus wanted to continue. Again, they did not know who he was, but they invited him um, to stay for dinner. And then they broke the bread, just like they did the night he was betrayed. And then they took the wine and blessed it, and they all partake of it. And at that moment when they had the bread and the wine, his presence became known to them. They realized it was Jesus. So the invitation is here for you today. Sometimes, just like they did, they were disappointed that day. They thought something else was going to happen. They thought something much more miraculous was going to appear. I'm asking you, how many times have we gone through life expected something different than actually what it was. But at the same time, we've been better off for it. So, and the story goes on, but to me, that first day, that first Sunday after his resurrection, Jesus was there and he's with us all the time. Every Sunday. Every time we get together and talk about it. And he's with us when we break this bread. So I'm asking for you, as we bless it, to come forward and break it with us. And share with us. And be in communion with Jesus today. Dear Heavenly Creator, dear God Almighty, we know that you were there at the beginning and will be continuing throughout the rest of time. We thank you for being through us throughout our recovery period. And some of us 
need second chances, and some like me need many chances. And dear God, I ask that you bless this bread as we break it today, and do this in the remembrance of our dear Lord Jesus' body. And dear God, I ask you to bless this, this grape juice or symbol of wine as we remember our dear Lord, Savior's blood. This is our prayer, and we do this in remembrance of him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So for all the people who are with us for the first time, it's our tradition at Founders MCC, like MCCs everywhere around the world, that we celebrate an open table, which means you don't have to be a member of this church, you don't have to be a member of any church. It's not up to the church or to, to us to control this table, it's a gift from God through Christ to everyone. So it's our tradition that we take a wafer and we dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice and place it upon your tongue and we offer a short prayer of blessing. If you would like to take the wafer and dip and serve it to yourself, you're welcome to. And if you would like to just have time alone with, with your God without any human interaction, there's gonna be a set of consecrated elements over to your right. So what I would like to do is um, invite the servers and the acolytes to come forward and I would like to invite you to follow the lead of our ushers. Amen.
So what we've learned today is that we are called to constantly improve our contact with God and to improve that contact through regular discipline, through regular worship, through regular opportunities to be of service in the world for knowing that what we give we get back triple and quadruple fold. This morning, as we promised right at the very beginning of this sermon series, we wanted to place a birthday cake on our altar as a reminder of all of those who might be celebrating birthdays, especially those who are birthdays in recovery. And so this morning, we bless this cake and honor the lives of those who are celebrating in whichever way, whether they're celebrating one minute, one day, one week, one year, 100 years of recovery. We are grateful for the testimonies of lives that have made a decision that life can be different. And so it is. And so it is. Now, this cake will be taken into the fellowship room. It's chocolate cake. Um, so there's every reason to stay behind and to share in fellowship and to visit everything that's going on in the courtyard this morning. So let's remain arisen as we close worship in song and as we give thanks for recovery. In Jesus' name. Amen. to God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given. Yes. And the blessing of God known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit Amen. be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. Amen.
you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You are 